Shabbat shalom. Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Perhaps the most famous phrase from the biblical book of Song of Songs. The rabbis pointed out that if you take the first letter of each word of that phrase, Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li, Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed, spells out Elul, the Hebrew month we're beginning today. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. We associate that phrase with relationships between people. Some people even say those words under the chuppah at a wedding ceremony. But they're really an expression of divine love, a mutual relationship of love between God and ourselves. It's the ultimate expression of chosenness, this ancient concept that the Jews are the chosen people. From the beginning of the Torah, our patriarchs and matriarchs are chosen from among many people for a special relationship with God. And that theme continues all the way through the Torah into this week's Parsha, where we are told, you are children of Adonai, your God. You shall not gash yourselves or shave the front of your heads because of the dead, for you are a people consecrated to Adonai, your God. Adonai, your God, chose you from among all other peoples on earth to be God's treasured people. We are chosen. We are treasured. Biblical commentators have many different views on this notion of chosenness. Perhaps it means exactly what we think it means. We're special, and other people aren't as special. One 16th century Italian commentator, Sforno, uses the preceding verse in the passage I just read to make that exact argument, explaining that other people, other peoples might be able to gash themselves or shave their heads because they're just less special. But we, we the chosen people, shouldn't disfigure ourselves because we are too important to harm. Other commentators like Rashi suggest that it's true that we do have this extra special status but it was really our ancestors who had to earn this designation, and we just got to inherit it. We're fortunate to be considered God's chosen and treasured people, and we have to be aware that it's luck because of who our ancestors were, not a statement about who we are intrinsically. It's a much more humbling perspective, but it ultimately expresses the same sentiment. We are special regardless of how we became special. Earlier in Deuteronomy, we read, God did not set God's love upon you nor choose you because you were more numerous than all other people, for you were fewer than all other peoples, but because God loved you and because God would keep the oath which God swore to your fathers, for God to bring you out with a mighty hand, redeem you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So why are we chosen according to that passage? Because God loves us. And why does God love us? Because we have this long-standing relationship. God has been involved in the journey of our people and invested in our survival for so long. And whether it started out as a loving relationship or not, it developed into one. And ultimately, God loves us because God loves us. Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li. We are God's beloved and God is ours. We don't always talk about chosenness as a way of expressing love, but of course it is. When we think of everything and everyone we choose in our own lives, the ideal is that it comes from a place of love. And so it is with God's choices as well. But I want to step back for a moment to discuss the phrase chosen people. We're so used to it, it's become part of the Jewish vocabulary to some extent. But to say we are chosen is really a fragment of a sentence. Just like saying we choose is a fragment. Choose, chosen, they're not states of being. They're actions that have to go with something else. We have to be chosen for something. Just like we don't just choose, we choose something. This is the perspective of Rabbi Brad Artson, who's the dean of the conservative rabbinical school in LA. He writes that what completes the chosenness of the Jews 
is the assertion that Jews are chosen to embody the life and values of the Torah and the rabbinic tradition. That's how we choose to be chosen. It's a two-way process. Just like any relationship, any covenant between two parties, either can break it at any time, which means that both we and God have a huge responsibility to maintain the specialness and uniqueness of our relationship. And that maintenance is a full-time job. We have to constantly renew our efforts to live our lives as God's chosen people. So maybe being chosen does mean that we are special. And maybe being chosen means that we are loved by God. Does it mean that we Jews are more special and more loved by God than all other peoples? If we believed that being the chosen people meant that we were intrinsically, biologically better and more special than other peoples, then we actually wouldn't accept Jews by choice. We would be a religion closed to conversion. And as we know, that couldn't be farther from the reality. We welcome Jews by choice with open arms, affirming that their souls have always been Jewish. Jews by choice teach us, all of us, that every single one of us must choose to be chosen. Chosenness is earned. Chosenness is a choice that we must make and renew each and every day. We must regularly ask ourselves, what are we chosen for? We as a people, as a Jewish people, are chosen for a life of Torah and mitzvot. So how will I live a life of Torah and mitzvot? in order to choose to be chosen by God. And what about you as an individual? What were you chosen for? What is your end of the two-way relationship with God? The talents you have, the interests you have, the goals you have, what were you put on this earth to do? What are you chosen for? I believe that we're all here for a reason. For some people, those making headlines for curing diseases, for example, we can all be pretty confident what they were put on this earth to do, why they're here. We know what they were chosen for. But chosenness doesn't have to be so big. It could be one tiny interaction, one small act we perform, and we may never know that that was the reason we are here on earth. That is what we were chosen to do. Pirkei Avot teaches us that when we are in a place with no people, meaning no one willing to step up and do the right thing, we must step up and be that person. We choose to be the person, the leader in the room. We choose to be chosen. Personally, I don't know what I was chosen for yet. It's my hope that being a rabbi gives me many opportunities to make a difference, to do good in the world and for individuals. And perhaps one of those little things that I will do will be it. The thing that I was chosen for, the reason I am alive, the reason I am special, the reason I am loved and chosen by God. Ani lidodi vidodi li, we are God's beloved and I am God's beloved and you are God's beloved. God is mine, God is yours. We stand today at the beginning of the new Hebrew month of Elul, the month immediately preceding the High Holy Days, the month that spells out this phrase expressing divine love and our chosenness. It's a month of starting to prepare our hearts, minds, and souls for the days of awe to come. And part of how we prepare is hearing the shofar each morning except for Shabbat. Most likely, it's been a little while since you've heard the shofar probably almost a year. It's meant to function as a wake-up call, an alert that the high holy days are around the corner, and with them comes an opportunity to better ourselves, to take stock of our strengths and weaknesses, and not only to try to improve our weaknesses, but to dive into our strengths as well, to hear the shofar's call, urging us to live the life we were chosen for, A life of Torah and mitzvot 
Yes, just like all Jews. But more specifically, the life you were chosen to, li to live. Because it's the life that only you can live. The things that only you can do, the reason you are special, the reason you are here. We are chosen. The Torah makes that clear, whatever it means to us. But Rabbi Artson is right to insist that it's not enough that we are chosen. It's not enough to end the sentence there. Ending the sentence there can lead us to entitlement and arrogance. We are not just chosen. We are chosen for something. I am chosen for something, you are chosen for something, and during Elul, we seek out opportunities for self-reflection, opportunities to heed the call of the shofar, opportunities to become who we were chosen to be. Those moments lead us to both national and personal chosenness, an opening for each one of us to choose to be chosen. Shabbat Shalom.